Hey guys, it's Patrick. I'm the lead editor and producer at LumaForge, and today Apple announced a brand new version of Final Cut Pro 10. Probably the biggest feature in Final Cut 10.4.4 is the inclusion of workflow extensions. The first of these extensions comes from Frame.io. If you want to share footage with other editors, all you have to do is grab your footage and drag it directly to the Frame.io extension window. And on the other side, the other editor can grab the footage from the Frame.io extension and download either proxy footage or the original. Additionally, in the Frame.io extension, you've got the ability to link playheads with Final Cut Pro. This allows you to click on a note inside of Frame.io, and it will take you to exactly the right moment in your Final Cut 10 timeline so that you can address the notes directly inside of Final Cut. Another huge feature inside of Final Cut 10.4.4 is the ability to batch export. I've been waiting for this for so long. <laughs> like, no joke, as an assistant editor, I used to want to batch export out of the browser all the time. And now you can. You can select multiple projects at once and export. You can select multiple synchronized clips, compound clips, or normal clips, and you can export them all simultaneously. You can now do color graded dailies inside of Final Cut Pro 10. So I might take a bunch of 8K clips, color grade them, batch export, use that as my dailies, and then relink back to the original footage at the very end of the process. And for those of you who decided to buy five different Mac Minis and have a Mac Mini cluster, now you can batch export from Final Cut to a Mac Mini cluster over 10 gig using something like a Jellyfish. And, you know, all of a sudden you've got a super fast transcoding machine, right? We've also got something called the Comparison Viewer for those of you who are doing a lot of color grading inside of Final Cut. I know that I personally do a lot of interview to B-roll grading, so I've got to match these different color temperatures to each other, and it can get really sticky. With the Comparison Viewer, I can compare the shot I'm currently grading to either the previous shot, the next shot, or I can save frames that can then be used to compare later on. Something that I'm personally extremely excited about is the ability to import and export SRT subtitles. Now, subtitles were already in Final Cut Pro 10, but you only had the ability to work with iTunes subtitles or CEA subtitles. Now, CEA subtitles are super helpful, especially for broadcast, and you can embed them within the file itself. It doesn't have to go as a sidecar file, which is amazing. But if I'm honest, I upload to YouTube, I upload to Wistia, I upload to Vimeo, I upload to Facebook, and what do they all have in common? SRT. <laughs> so now I've got the ability to bring those subtitles in, and because they are connected clips, they follow my footage, so I can even move shots to the end of the timeline. My subtitles will follow along, and then I've got the ability to export a new version from Final Cut and because it can export an SRT file, I can set that as a sidecar file, or I can do a burn-in of those subtitles whenever I'm exporting. Another big feature inside of Final Cut Pro 10 is the new noise reduction. This is great for anybody who's got noisy footage, but is especially helpful for people who are working with VR footage or who are working in HDR. The noise reduction that's built into Final Cut Pro 10 is not quite as flexible as something like Neat Video, but it is just about as powerful as the temporal noise reduction that's built into Resolve. Something that people have been asking for for a long time is a floating timecode window. With the new floating timecode window, we've got two versions. We've got the project timecode window and we've got the source timecode window. The project timecode window, very straightforward. It's just the project timecode, which you already have underneath your viewer anyway. Personally, for me, this isn't a huge win. The huge win for me is the source timecode window, which allows me to see the source timecode of whatever footage is in the timeline in addition to the project timecode. I can elect to have the clip rolls of the footage in the timeline show up in this window. So I can have five or six different layers of footage going on all at once, and I can see the time code, I can see the roll, and I get a color for the specific roll of that footage in the source time code window. For those of you who are working in VR, and I am not, there is this new mode called Tiny Planet. This is great if you've got 360 source footage, but you're working in a two-dimensional timeline. It makes a 360 sphere look like a tiny planet. But probably, if we're going to be completely honest, the most groundbreaking and mind-shattering thing to come in 1044 is the brand new comic book effect. You've seen it inside of clips for your iPhone. Now you can do it inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Oh my god, I'm going to get so impressionistic with all of my footage now. 
So there are a lot of new features inside of Final Cut 10.4.4. I know the ones that I'm excited about. Which ones are you excited about? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.